Good evening and welcome to episode 353 of the Private Property Podcast. I'm your host, Uzaman Dungwa Kumalo. It's the Friday edition of the Private Property Podcast. We join us for the first time. Welcome to the family. You're tuned in to the only daily property talk show in South Africa, catering to your property needs. And to all, your, uh, to all our regular viewers on Facebook, on Instagram, as well as on YouTube, welcome back. You know how we do it every single weekday you and i have an appointment we're always tackling a property issue uh, and always having you know somebody who's a property expert who helps us make better property decisions and i think if anything today's a friday it's been raining in joburg we finally have the first uh, you know summer rains and and of course a lot of our robots in joburg are also uh, unfortunately not working it's actually talking to to my guests and the team behind the scenes that look it's it's we're now there we're now there but but we're here you know, a few minutes uh, later than we typically are. And then one of the great things, of course, that you can look forward to as it is Friday and you're getting ready uh, for the weekend are also the other great shows that you're able to catch across private properties, social media platforms. As it is a Friday, you can catch the Home Shoppers Show with Chad that comes to your screens every single Mondays and Fridays at 8 p.m. And on Tuesdays and Thursdays, Mbali brings you the Forming Podcast. And they're now running a great series, the gardening series that you can look forward to very regularly. And I think that's one of the things that so many of us would probably want help with, especially now that the rains are here and you know, probably want to spend a bit of time uh, in your garden. And on Wednesdays, Esther Klaassen brings you the first time home buyer show, where she's always in conversation with people who have gone and grown their property portfolios from strength to strength. And of course, we are running a great competition here on Private Property where we get to give away five 500 rands in cash every single evening. And all you have to do is send a chance of walking away with that is uh, comment on the the pinned post on our Facebook page. And you also have to watch us live. That's really the only catch with how to claim the money. You have to watch all your name. Then you need to drop us a message to claim the prize. That's it's that easy. And if we don't have somebody who claims it, the money goes into the money bag. And the following day, it just keeps growing. So later on, you'll get a snapshot of who's potentially the winner of that two thousand rands that is in the money bag imagine starting off your you know the payday weekend uh with that two thousand rands i know some people are saying that look the the money that we got on on friday uh or the, rather the money we got last week uh say pay lili you know it's okay almost like really was the September salary supposed to last us up to this point. So if you want to make sure you win that money, make sure that you stay tuned and should we call your name, drop us a message. This evening we're talking about something that 
I absolutely love, I was even saying to my guests, we're looking at settling legal disputes between landlords and tenants. And I think this is one of those things, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a landlord, I've been a tenant. And one of the things about sometimes even being a landlord is you might be a landlord and also a tenant. And sometimes you might be a residential tenant or even a commercial tenant. So really a lot of us always need to find ways of understanding uh, some of these disputes and how to settle them. And today we're going to be looking beyond even settling them, really also just getting a sense, what are some of the typical disputes that we generally get and how do we sort of go about rectifying them? And also how do we make sure we prevent some of these disputes? Because we tend to find that more often than not, these things are avoidable. Uh, and to help us get a better sense of how we can go about doing that this evening, I'm joined by Leah Harder, who's a director at Harder Incorporated. Leah, good evening and thank you so much for coming back on the show this evening. Azama, thank you so much for having me. It's only a pleasure. I think, Leah, before we even look at the settling part, right, I think that's, that's sort of the second aspect. What would you say are some of the you know, typical disputes that landlords and tenants uh, you know, would have? Because it, I think it's great to just first get a sense of what kind of disputes are we actually talking about. So, I mean, there's so many, but I think uh, the basic ones I can think of at the top of my head um, are utility disputes, you know, overcharging for water, electricity, or anything else. Um, other disputes are with maintenance. For example, a tenant says, I've got a big issue with the maintenance uh, um, mat and, uh, you know, it could be a light bulb. It could be that simple. Or it could be something as major as a geezer. And uh, there's disputes as to who's responsible. Um, and just there's a number of disputes that, that are practically um, faced by landlords and tenants day to day in their relationship. Mm. Uh, you know, when you when you started with the with the utility one, part of me was you know, internally screaming because I think it is unfortunately one of those things. Uh, when I think about how rates went up uh, and utility bills kind of went up, uh, I think it was two three months ago. And it's a shock, right? It's a shock to tenants. And even as a landlord, because you live somewhere. So even if you're living in a property that you, know, you own, you've also seen your own you know, utility bill go up. And, and sometimes you think, well, maybe I'm being mischarged for it. And I know that tenants would be like, there's no way that uh, this is actually my charge. And that's how some of these things uh, often start. Before we look at the settling part, how can you go about almost trying to avoid um, some of these, uh, you know, disputes, because I think I can already think at the top of my head, a lot of them you know, stem from, and, and I nearly said an OTP, but stem, stem from a lease agreement um, and, and some of the terms in the lease agreement, whether the one party didn't read it, and often sometimes, you know, the landlord, uh, I mean, the, 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 the tenant, before we look at how we should go about settling it, how do we avoid some of these, uh, you know, some of these matters? Because we already know not a lot of us, both landlords and tenants alike, can actually afford you know, a legal dispute and having to, you know, get attorneys in. Uh, so, what are some of the ways that we can use to, at the very least, avoid uh, having to get to a legal dispute? Okay, so for me, it's quite simple. First and foremost, it's having. Um, a uh, clear and concise lease agreement signed by the parties. Um, now, there's going to be some amendments to the Rental Housing Act soon, which will make, hopefully soon, it's been a while now, but uh, yeah. which will make a requirement, legal requirement to have a, a lease agreement reduced to writing. Uh, I think it's critical. I think that's good form anyway and good practice to have that done anyway. But the, the major reason for that, for me, it comes down to intangibles, which is uh, understanding of your responsibilities from both sides. So if it's a clear and concise lease agreement, and for example, it says, although it doesn't usually, but the geezer is the tenant's responsibility. It's not usually the case, but let's say it did say that. This particular deal, that's what the lease says. It's very easy for a landlord to refer back to that and say, listen, tenant, I understand your issue, the geezer's burst, but look in the lease. Clause 3.1.2 says that it's the tenant's responsibility to uh, maintain and replace the geezer. Uh, it's a ridiculous example, of course, because the geezer is usually done by the landlord, but you get the gist of it. It's, if it's a reduced to writing and signed by the parties, you can pretty much agree anything you want. So that's number one, clear and concise lease agreement signed by the parties, and you can always refer back to it. The second thing, which it's hugely important, transparency in the relationship and the communication. So for argument's sake, when a tenant asks you, 
or, or has an issue with a utility dispute, as you said now, utility charge, the first thing you need to do is communicate the landlord that's charging you. It's a municipality that's charging the landlord. Yeah. You just pass it on. In fact, it's, it's actually unlawful to make a profit on electricity and utilities in any event. So all I'm saying is that shows great transparency. If you can attach a great communication, if you can attach the invoice for argument's sake from the uh, municipality, and, and that's one of the key things is transparency and communication because it leads to a diminishing of the distrust element of, in the relationship. So those are my top two concise lease agreements and uh, transparency and communication. Mm-mm-mm. And, you know, Leah, I think one of the things that we do underestimate uh, when we are tenants, I think I'll, I'll, I'll wear the tenant hat for a little, for a little bit, is w- we generally just have that sentiment that, you know, landlords are just out to you know, make money, make my life difficult and overcharge me for certain things. And so even though we, we know that uh, electric, I mean, um, rent is this amount, so the fixed costs are this amount, the unfortunate thing with utility charges, especially when they're not prepaid, is that they do fluctuate. And more often than not, when you do see that increase, your immediate assumption is, oh, they're trying to make a quick buck out of me. And, and sometimes it's, it kind of starts there, right, where you have that perception. And I know we tend to have it. It's not just a South African thing. Almost all over, uh, a lot of us just seem to feel landlords is just out there for blood. Um, but when you see... The, the figures, as you say, you know, when you actually say, oh, snap, this is actually coming from, you know, COJ or whoever, uh, let's say if it's, a, it's from the, you know, complex, this is the amount that's coming through. I think even you as a tenant realize that, okay, this is not my landlord trying to, you know, be malicious or make a bit of, you know, money from me. And, and it's such an important thing for us to be able to do because unfortunately, we, we, we're not used to having those kinds of relationship with, you know, our landlords. It's, it's usually just that love-hate relationship. It's almost like, you know, the relationship with the tax man. But, you know, you just kind of have to do this thing. But you don't need to kind of be friendly with them. Uh, so I really like that transparency becomes a good thing. And I hope the landlords are, are listening. Because sometimes it even goes to when you start the relationship with your tenant, start it on that front. So don't even wait for the part where uh, they end up complaining. Because one of the realities is, more often than not during you know when we approach the winter season that's when some of these bills also tend to go up so when you've been sending that from the get-go they know that if winter comes and suddenly the electrical bill goes to two thousand rands you're not suddenly being transparent because you're trying you know you're kind of saving face but you've been doing it from the get-go. And I want to find out from you at home, whether you're a landlord or a tenant, have you had certain disputes, whether they ended up being legal disputes or you were able to resolve them before getting attorneys in the mix? How did that go about? And I really want to hear from both landlords and tenants um, some of the issues that you may have had with your tenant or your landlord and the different ways that you went about uh, resolving those issues. Do share with us down below, whether you're watching us on Facebook, Instagram, or of course, about settling these matters. Let's go for a quick break and see who that potential lucky winner is. And that lucky winner this evening is Utsepo Stephen Magubo. Uh, Tsepo Stephen Magubo. Hope you're watching. 2,000 rands is up for grabs right here on the Private Property Podcast with myself, Uzamandungwa Kumalo. This evening, as we look at settling legal disputes between landlords and tenants, uh, you have until the end of the show, Tsepo, to grab that 2,000 rands that is in the money bag. Uh, and of course, I'm in conversation with Liad Harder, who's a director at Harder Incorporated. Now, Liad, and if in the unfortunate event where, you know, whether you're a tenant or a landlord and you do uh, find yourself uh, in a matter where you're now having a legal dispute with your, with your tenant or your landlord, what are some active steps uh, should you be taking? Because I think the reality is more often than not the one party, typically the landlord, is the one who would probably, you know, know to go to an attorney 
first, as opposed to it being the, the tenant who does that first and would know that it's served, whether it's a letter of demand or whatever kind of legal document uh, that gets served. What are some of the do's and don'ts, especially in that in the early stages of a legal dispute between you know a landlord and a tenant? Okay, Zama, so, so now I can speak quite openly about the fact that I represent pretty much 95% of our clients are landlords. So I'm very centric. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a bit more information about that. Uh, we litigators, right? Litigators like to litigate. That mm-hmm. said, I incorporate a very different type of law firm. Um, we look to settle as a court of first call because we feel that there's much more value in that, not only for our clients, but in fact for the tenant as well. And the entire relationship is an element of, of fairness and justice in it. So I've got a, a, many thoughts on it. And you'll never, um, I think, regularly or often hear from a litigator who's dissuading you from litigating and going against the business model, right? It's quite silly. But I think I said this last time I was on, but I really genuinely yeah. mean it. I think that so much more value to clients, to our clients as landlords in settling the matter amicably. Um, now, he, he has the main reason for it. And... Uh, I just was reading a Harvard Business Review uh, a, a article earlier today. In America, legal disputes and litigation cost $20 billion to the major corporations. $20 billion a year to major corporations only. It's not the whole country. And the reality is what this report is talking about you know, in the Harvard Business Review is it's not just the money that you're spending on litigation, but it's having key personnel also being kept busy in litigation going to what they call their depositions and what we would call in court here, I guess, uh, you know, court hearings and everything else and Mm. consultations and whatever. So you're not only losing financially on legal fees, you're losing a lot of time and and angst is added to the equation. Now that, translate that now from a corporate to an individual landlord, it's amplified by that much more. You're an individual landlord with one property, right? And you've got a tenant in place. Not only are you incurring legal fees, you're already anxious and feeling upset about the, the, the tenant and the situation. So your, you know, your blood pressure is through the roof. Your, your health is being affected, probably. Um, but you're also spending a lot of time on it. And, and you probably, at times, unfortunately, and I've seen it with individual landlords, you become, you, you become uh, besotted almost. You, you, you can't let go of the matter. It, 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 it takes over your entire day. It takes over every thought you've got. And you just feel this anger all the time and i'm saying you know trust me as a litigator do not litigate i mean it's crazy you can use that as a headline i guess um as i say business planners will say to me you know what kind of businessman are you but i'm I'm telling you now uh it's a good thing to do so after that long uh you know summary on it i must tell you a a personal example and it literally happened to me in the last week i've got a a, a, actually a tenant came to me for one of the five percent that happens came to me They've got a a company in a commercial uh, office. Uh, It's a commercial slash industrial. So they've got an office and a warehouse in there. And they came to me about four months ago with an issue with the landlord. And the landlord, I happened to know, and I thought they'd be reasonable. So I said, guys, you know what? Let's sit around the table and let's not litigate. You're on the cusp of litigation here over a million rand. That was the arrears uh, that accrued after lockdown and everything else. Uh, I'm not going to mention clients' names, of course, for confidentiality purposes but um the one company is in uh, the alcohol uh, industry and the other one's the landlord and and, and obviously they were heavily affected by the, the uh, restrictions and the bans being in the alcohol industry so i went to the landlord with them and i said okay guys instead of litigating because you guys are at each other's throats it was quite a build-up of animosity i said let's try to settle this matter i know both of you and i think we can settle it i think they both looked at me quite quite strangely and saying you know well, why are you considering this this approach and I just said, I, I, I can guarantee you long term, if we can resolve this matter and you sign your new lease for five years, which is the intention, and avoid litigation, you'll both be happier for it. So fortunately, they both gave me a chance and they listened to me and we, we mediated of sorts. It was informal mediation where I listened to both sides. I'd listened to the tenant. I'd listened to the landlord separately. And then I tried to come up with solutions. And we had a few back and forth. In fact, it took four months. And I can tell you as of last week, uh, sorry, this week, we signed the lease and, and everyone is as happy as they can be in the circumstances. And, and when I tell you we were on the, on the cusp of some serious litigation, I'm not joking. We were about, or we were, I wasn't going to ever get involved in the litigation side of things, but we were about, they were about to, to go at each other. 
it would have cost them both hundreds of thousand rands in, in litigation fees. It would have not helped either of them to concentrate on their core businesses, the landlord to have a tenant in place and collect rental and the tenant to operate and, and try to run a business at a profit. So it, it's testament to the real power of settling matters. And that's why I said in my topic yeah, is, is settling is, is a sign of strength. It's not a sign of weakness, what people think it is, generally speaking. So that's my, my story on uh, why settling is actually a better thing for you. And, you know, Leah, I, you, as we've been saying, it's, it's, it's strange that a litigator would, you know, would say don't litigate. And, and I know that it was also just something that you had said the last time you were here. But I think it actually speaks because some of my best friends are our attorneys. And even they typically would say try to not you know, litigate, try to, whatever the matter is, don't go to court. Uh, we can send letters, send letters, but really the core of it is let's have a sit down. Let's see how we can manage this dispute outside of, of court because those things can drag. Plus with it being COVID, we'll probably drag even longer. The cost of it is actually so high. And I think when we look at the, you know, residential side is both parties usually just cannot afford that, right? Not just the tenant, but even you as a landlord, for the most part, cannot afford to, you know, end up in a, in a long legal dispute with your tenant, who by the time you probably even see court is now no longer your tenant. So I think the very first big thing is the aim should not the aim should be that you you're not you, it's not you it's not you're not going to litigate you're not going to get to court trying to resolve it as early as possible and so Leah, we're in the event where we now know that we're not going to be litigating we want to be able to settle uh, you know get in the boardroom with both our attorneys then what what kind of tips would you share with us when we're in 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 that space because i think the reality of a lot of those kinds of disputes is one party sometimes may feel very heavily aggrieved and still want some kind of recourse or remedy. Uh, the other party might think, well, I actually didn't do anything. Uh, I shouldn't have to be, whether it's you know, paying X amount. So what are some of the do's and don'ts when we then find ourselves you know, in that particular space where we're very clear that we're not going to try and you know, take anything to court because you're... You're, you're a normal tenant in a residential property and you're also a normal landlord uh, who's probably got, you know, a few properties in your portfolio. So both parties from a financial perspective certainly don't have the, the means to want a drawn out thing. What should we do, be doing and not doing when we're now looking at resolving and settling that matter uh, in, in an attorney's boardroom, for instance? Okay, so I'm going to say something as equally uh, controversial as don't litigate, coming from a litigator. But I'm speaking now from 11 years of experience in residential evictions. I'm talking to the landlord right now. Uh, and a residential eviction is a very costly process. Uh, you're looking at at least 18,000 rand in legal fees, plus sheriff's cost and uh, a few months of not collecting rent. Once you've gone to war, you've gone to war. Don't expect the tenant yeah. to continue paying once you've decided to try to evict them. So it's, again, it's going to be controversial, but this is a very practical tip I've got for any landlord. Um, offer the tenant money to pay a deposit elsewhere. And I'll tell you why I say that. It's, and it sounds, it goes against my grain and it also goes against the justice in this world, right? Someone already owes you a month or two worth of rental and you're saying, here's money for you to go away. But just hear me out for a second. If you don't do that and you go to war, um, the reality is you're going to be incurring those legal fees I just spoke about. You'll be, you'll be then having a matter heard within the next three, four months until you get the eviction order, let's say, with the person actually evicted, uh, two, three, four months, and you won't get rental for that time. That's going to cost you much, much more than offering someone 7,500 rand, let's say, if that's their rental, and say, here's the money, go and pay a deposit somewhere else, and please get out of here by the end of the month. It's a bitter pill to swallow, but trust me, trust me again, from experience only and from seeing the pain and, and not, not wanting to see the pain, that going legal and having uh, uh, the legal fees rack up and the time that it takes to evict someone, two, three, four months, it's much more painful than that initial horrible sting of paying someone seven and a half thousand rand to leave if that's their monthly rental. Trust me, you'll get them out if they agree to the deal, obviously. Um, you'll get them out quicker and, and cheaper. Mm -hmm. Again, it goes against business model of a law firm. 
take this as as your uh, free advice for the year. And if you can resolve matters like this, please do. Yeah. The only time you should go litigate is if a tenant is really being unreasonable. If you as a landlord are being very reasonable and a tenant is being very unreasonable, to the extent that they won't even take money to leave, then you have to litigate and the gloves are off. Then you're welcome to come to us and uh, the clause will be out and every other sort of uh, phrase I can use, uh, we'll, we'll use against these guys, you know. Yeah. But try, be practical and, and try to get the quickest possible solution for your own sake. Forget their sake, forget your ego and forget all the angst inside of you and the anger. Just get the, re the, the, the result as soon as you can. That's one practical tip, Zaman, that I can give you. And that's probably my number one tip for eviction uh, issues between clients because it also gives the tenant the out. You say, tenant, I, you're unhappy, I'm unhappy. He has money to go somewhere else as a, as a tenant. You're not happy here, go there, and, and I'm going to help you on your way. Uh, I promise you that if you do that, hopefully one day, uh, if you're a landlord listening to this uh, and you've had the troubles of evictions before and you know it's costly, you know it's time-consuming, uh, you'll have hopefully thanked me when you've successfully done this kind of settlement mm -hmm. in a matter and realized that you've got your property back earlier and you can start renting out to a, a more suitable tenant for your sake. Mm -mm -mm. You, you know, Leah, one of the things I, I appreciate about you is you're not a, you know, you're not a typical attorney uh, who's, I'll say, out for let's, let's see how many clients we can get in as much as possible because you also understand the fundamental big picture. I think when, when we look at uh, tenants in certain matters, certain matters really don't need to even get an attorney involved, right? Yes, there are certain instances where we absolutely have to, especially, uh, as you're saying, when you're dealing with unreasonable tenants, but others, and I've never... I've fully and completely in arrears. And so giving them that kind of out certainly does uh, help substantially because they're thinking, how am I going to then, you know, find another place where I'll probably need to pay that seven and a half thousand as a deposit and a first rental uh, up front and probably be somebody else's problem. Uh, I'd rather just stay here. And, and I know that the landlord can't suddenly, you know, you know block my services or whatever the case is. In the event where you then are dealing with an unreasonable tenant and you have to litigate, and this is particularly for, for landlords, what are some of the things that you should not do in that process? Uh, and already I, I hinted on some of the stuff that some landlords unfortunately do where they think I'll, you know, I'll block your, I'll you know, switch off water and electricity, whatever the case is. But once you now know, you know, you're going to an attorney, you're going full on um, litigation, what are the do's and don'ts when you're now in that process and your attorneys are now handling the matter? Okay, so Zama, once you go legal, then what I would say is take a step back. Uh, trust the professional you've gone to, especially if you've gone to a property law specialist. And hopefully you have, because it's a big mistake in my mind if you don't. So once you've gone, trust the professional. Just like you were a doctor who's performing heart surgery on you. It's not as drastic, but it, it's like your equivalent of your, your investment lifeline, you know. You need to step back and let the professional take care of it. Um, it it's easier said than done, but try, relax, and try and understand that it's now under control and it's going to be handled. Don't do anything unlawful, anything silly. You know, I got a phone call, as you would imagine, as a landlord's attorney the other day, and, a, and the landlord's uh, representative said, okay, can we lock out now? And I said, absolutely not. I said, but they said to me, will it hurt our case? And I said, to be honest with you, it won't hurt your case. So when we bring the eviction application or the rental collection, it will not hurt our case theoretically. But what it will do is make you act unlawfully, which means that the tenant, and this is advice for tenants, because I'm actually absolutely pro uh, tenants not being locked yeah. out uh, and unlawfully. You can go to court and get a spoliation uh, order against the, the landlord. Now, landlords also need to be very concerned about this because not only can you get a cost order against you in a court application, which can be substantial and cost you a lot of money, but also it's a, actually a criminal act uh, in terms of the Rental Housing Act. So you just got to be careful. I mean, I don't know anyone person who's ever been prosecuted criminally for, uh, you know, breaching the, the Rental Housing Act, but it, it's a concern. You don't want to be the first guy 
or girl that gets uh, prosecuted criminally in that regard. So just be a bit wary of that. Actually, very wary, not a bit wary. So mm -hmm. let go. Let a professional handle it. Do not do anything unlawful. And if you can, this is a do right now, try to be reasonable with your tenant and try to communicate with them still and say, it's gone to my attorneys. I don't want to have the, the anxiety. I don't want to have the emotional approach to it because it's with them now. But if we are able to settle this thing amicably, maybe I can write off some of your arrears and I can let you, you know, off the hook for some of it. Please, would you commit to leaving by a certain date? That's something the attorney can then pick up on and, and reduce to writing and have signed by the parties by way of a settlement agreement. So mm. I'm not encouraging you to go chase the tenant after you've gone legal, but sometimes that the fact that it's gone legal is that extra push for the tenant to take you more seriously as a landlord. And I would then capitalize on that and say, okay, there is an attorney on board, but you can still settle the matter amicably directly with the tenant if you want to, and the attorney will confirm that in writing uh, to be made a settlement agreement. Mm -hmm. And getting some of the comments and how long sometimes the justice system will you know, resolving certain things uh, the court route takes, you would know that you probably don't want to find yourself uh, you know in that space so you really do want to make sure that you settle outside of court as much as possible and and i think you know Liad, the really big thing and I, i've never heard it anywhere with different you know guests and even different attorneys the option of giving the tenant uh that that you know the rental amount and be like you can go find you know a place elsewhere that's a tip that I'm certainly going to, you know, carry with me because we we often, I think, as landlords, sometimes think, well, I've already lost out on two months worth of rental. Why should I have to stay with this person? And not understanding the longer term part is that if they then decide to stay four more months, uh, and obviously raking up, you know, not just the rental. So if they're living in a place where the utility charge uh, is not prepaid, they're also raking that up and potentially even damaging your place because we also know that unfortunately. Uh, tenants who go into areas do tend to leave the place in a slightly undesirable way is it not rather financially better for you to give them that amount uh you know blame it on the game write it write it off and you know that uh within a week or two you're able to already put your apartment up or your property up and and get a new tenant Liad, before i let you go any final tips for our viewers at home when it comes to settling uh, a legal dispute whether you know they're a tenant themselves or if they are a landlord so Zama, I just want to touch on what you just said. I think you, you're seeing a bigger picture, and, and I love that. I think you're understanding that it's an infinite game, not the finite game, where there's no full-time score here. You're looking to create a, uh, an asset that's worth something, your property, um, and, and you've got to look long-term. And I just want to touch on that point of paying, the controversial point of paying a tenant to, who's in arrears to leave. Just do the maths, guys. I mean, it's very simple. As a landlord, You've got a tenant who already owes you a month or two, otherwise you wouldn't be doing any of this, right? So you're already in, let's assume the rental's 5,000 rand a month. You're down 10,000 rand plus potential utilities. And let's say you go legal and the person digs their heels in and you, and even if they don't oppose it, they just stay in the premises. You're looking at three months worth of non-rental again. That's an extra 15,000 rand on top of the 10. That's 25,000 rand. Then you're looking at legal fees. Let's round it up to 20,000 rand. So now you're looking at 45,000 rand before you potentially have your tenant out. Compare 45,000 rand, as much as it hurts, it's a bitter pill to swallow, against 7,500 rand paying someone to leave. Um, even if you add the current arrears of 10,000 rand, it's 17,500 rand versus 45,000 rand, and you get your premises back almost immediately, as you say, maybe two weeks. You've got to think bigger picture. You've got to think that settling is the, ultimately the better result for you. Pride aside, ego aside, principles aside for now. Principles cost money, is what they, they love to say, and it's very, very true. You can go after them. You can sue them. You can do anything you want. You can get judgment against them. There's no guarantee you'll get your money back. And when you evict them, there is a guarantee they'll get evicted because I've got a motto in our firm. It's a question of when, not if. We will always evict someone. Just how long will it take? But that time period and that those costs are just not worth it. So... In closing, my final tip, of, uh, in addition to that tip of paying uh, 
um, seven and a half thousand rand, whatever the monthly rental is for them to leave, is to think strategically about every single matter as a landlord. If you want to, if you want to save money and time and anxiety, settle matters, settle them quickly and settle them fairly. And to the tenants who are out there, trust me, you're lucky that you're not getting a letter from our firm or a summons or an eviction order. Take that money and run. Trust mm. me, it's better for you long term. It doesn't affect your credit rating that way. You won't have judgments against you. You, you won't have all the anxiety yourselves of being sued and have been dragged to court. So it's good for everyone. So mm. be fair to each other. Be open-minded to settling. Egos aside, principles gone. Settle, settlement and, and, and quick resolution to matters is the big win for everyone. Mm, they are, I love that. You know, settle, settle quickly and the big one, settle fairly. Uh, and I think one of the big things as a, a landlord in particular is understanding the fundamental long-term view when it comes to real estate. It's not just that one tenant uh, or that one property and, you know, those three months, if you've got that asset, you know that you might be looking at holding on to it for 5, 10, 15, 20 years. And so when you take that long-term view, you know that that seven and a half thousand rands is, is really a drop in the ocean uh, in the grand scheme of things. And I think if anything, if you ever if you find yourself in, 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 a, in a legal matter, uh, certainly do go to Hara Incorporated because one of the things that you know you're going to be guaranteed is that they're not going to be pushing litigation uh, in as much as it, it, it would make business sense for them. Uh, but we'd be looking at how do we resolve this quickly and fairly. And as a landlord, that would certainly be something that you are looking out for. Uh, Liar, we're going to leave it there this evening thank you so much for joining us on the show it's always such a pleasure to have you thank you so much i'm looking forward to the next time and that is Liat Harder, who's a director at Harder Incorporated, wrapping up the Friday edition of the Private Property Podcast with myself, Uzaman Dungwa Kumalo. And unfortunately, Utepo Makupo has not, uh, you know, dropped us a message down here below, meaning Monday, the money rolls over. We're going to have 2,500 rands in the money bag. Well, it is my time to go. And of course, I'll be back on your screens on Monday evening at 7 p.m. You can look forward to the Home Shoppers Show with Chan this evening at eight until then hoping you're staying home and staying safe